Okay, so let's look at what makes great video. What actually determines a good business video? A lot of people believe it's the cinematic, the kind of lighting or sound or scripting or like all these fancy things that we believe that are kind of programmed from the marketing perspective and the commercial perspective that that is what actually makes a difference inside our little organizations when you're talking about businesses and using videos to communicate. It's actually a fallacy because here's the number one thing that matters the most and you'd be surprised and it's to do this magical word. Content, okay? Content and content that is specifically aligned to audience. So content that speaks to the audience, which is in another sense, it's the content that the audience wants to open, wants to consume. And you see this exact same behavior in a thing that we call email every single day. If an email comes to your inbox that somebody else didn't send you or you don't know them, it's a newsletter. If you don't like it, if it doesn't resonate with you, you're not going to open it, period. So that all depends on the content. Yes, there's definitely in terms of there has to be good sound quality, right? You got to be able to hear. There's got to be good lighting. You have to be able to see and there can't be kind of blurry or shaky. There's some basic fundamental principles that have to be around it, but most everything to do with it, it's the content. And this is where a lot of businesses go wrong. This is where a lot of business videos fail when they create the first big videos, the videos about themselves. Now, yes, there are times and places where you need to create business videos that talk about what you do and how you do it and why are you important, but it's a delicate balance. And we're going to talk about that um, in essentially how to script the videos and we're working with the uh, uh, creating the content for those videos. But you always have to remember yourself. The most important part is an answer. Ask this question. Is somebody going to care? Is somebody going to open up that email and click? Are they going to click on the little thumbnail? Are they going to click on the little video description on LinkedIn or the social channels? Is it going to appeal to them? And typically you need to give them a snippet through the title or the thumbnail image, which we're going to talk about exclusively. Um, further on down the line is that it has to relate to the audience and really they want to be engaging in that content. So let's talk about the next one quite often. How long should a video be the length of a video? I get this asked quite often and people say, Hey, can we do a video in 15 seconds or 30 seconds? Let's just super sh short snippets. The answer is yes, you can. But again, you have to go back to kind of the goal of the video. And when we get to the content section of actually, you know, putting that video structure together, we're going to look at that quite a bit is what is the goal of the video? What are you trying to achieve? But here are some fundamental principles that you can kind of follow where typically you're going to be able to fit any kind of video that you do into, you know, the following sequences. So let's talk about video length when it comes to business video. And, and this applies to sales, marketing, HR, communication, training, doesn't matter what you do. Here is the typical kind of framework I put him uh, into. Okay. So we have like kind of three categories I look at the social one, like the social snippets. And you see that a lot, the quick stuff, right? Usually it's a lot of quick kind of cuts and, and then B rule images and something that kind of, it almost just sparks your attention, right? It, it's a, it's attention grabber. A lot of times it's not actually people speaking. It's just a bunch of images with some words. Those are typically around 15 to 30 seconds. Now they're quite actually hard to do making them shorter because believe it or not, it's actually harder to create a shorter video than it is a longer one because in a shorter video, well, you have to get to the point very, very quickly. And I'm going to show you a graph in terms of engagement, how that, works and why that kind of is so important. The other one I call it kind of the sales and marketing. So anytime you're doing an outbound stuff or, uh, you know, social channels like LinkedIn's really good for it, or you're trying to send a video blog or a video newsletter where it has some, you know, 
value in the content that you can get across. The sales and marketing one, I always kind of go two to three minutes. That's the kind of the ballpark. And there's basically some science behind it, but here it is. In about two to three minutes, you can actually get some pretty good content across and you don't stretch it out and people's attention span around that kind of two to three minute mark. Some will argue, hey, you have to be 60 seconds or 90 seconds. I said, look, here's what you need. You need a ton of video content, so just get it out there. And I've personally done a ton of tests. I've shot videos that were two minutes, that were like three and a half minutes. Some I stretched it out, some I made shorter. People still have an average attention span, which I'm gonna show you what that graph looks like here in a second. The last one, the kind of the third one is training. And it's just, it's just a little bit of a training content. They're like this type of material. Um, you'll see naturally, I do about five to eight minutes. And I necessarily don't wanna go past that eight minute mark or that even 10 minute mark because the human brain, the human mindset goes through what's called a, like a cognitive shift. Every eight minutes or so, eight to 10 minutes, we start kind of like shifting and thinking about different things. This is actually kind of my personal theories related to when we started watching sitcoms and the 30 minutes of a show had breaks in it from commercial breaks and each of the main sections was roughly eight to 10 minutes long. So that's our kind of attention span. So when you're doing training material, um, you can focus on that. A lot of people will ask me, it's like, well, Peter, I have like five hours of training. What do you do? It's quite simple. Chapters, right? So if you have 60 minutes of content, you essentially have six to eight, you know, little clips that are roughly the five to eight minute or so chunks. And this is probably the biggest mistake I see. A lot of people will naturally put a webinar. They'll record a, four, five, a 45 minute or a, an hour long webinar and put that webinar on their YouTube page. First of all, you're not gonna watch it. The person who created the webinar is not gonna watch it. So if that's not gonna happen, then no one else is gonna watch it, let alone your customers or your prospects are gonna watch it. And lastly, if you put a massive webinar like that, on your YouTube channel. YouTube actually looks at and judges you based on your engagement. We'll get a little deeper in that when we talk about distribution, but I'm gonna give you a little bit of hint. YouTube is pretty, pretty smart. And they look at it that if somebody's not really engaging in your content, they're gonna say, well, you're kind of creating content that kind of sucks and nobody wants it. Thus actually lowering your rankings. So you gotta think about that. It's all about creating content and alignment that people want and also just getting to the point. And if you lag on, or if you create something really, really long, well, nobody's gonna watch it. A 45 minute video, man, I could barely get through a Netflix episode. <laughs> that is, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes. So you better have some pretty cool content and stuff in there.